There I am at Keen Buffet. It is December 29th, 2014, and I am here with James Robin Hood Cleveland, yep. who's having a pre-trial dinner here with yep. some fellow activists. So, uh, James, big day tomorrow. Yep, I would, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. I mean, yeah, I asked you, are you excited? Words, so. Well, I said, are you excited? You said, uh, that wouldn't be the word for it. Yeah. What would be the word for it? Oh, nervous, of course, but... Yeah. It's like anything, I'll get it done. I mean, uh, it's like the more I do, the more courage I get. So it's like, like opening a business or something is nothing compared to like standing up to the state at the end of the day. Cool, well, let's eat. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Okay, I see. Sorry. I'll just quickly go over the procedure with you. This is, uh, there are two complaints of disorderly conduct and one resisting arrest of all Class A misdemeanors. Uh, you've had an opportunity either to consult with an attorney or to apply for counsel if you wanted uh, to do that. It looks like your arraignment was on September 2nd. Oh, that's just what see here. It's okay. Uh, on September 2nd, so you've had a chance to apply for counsel if you, if you qualified financially or get some advice, but you're willing to go forward with this today? Yeah, yes, yes, sir. Okay. The right. uh, procedure is, how many witnesses do you have? Six witnesses, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, so the witnesses will be called in whatever order, and then they'll give their testimony as each uh, witness completes di direct examination. If you have questions to ask them afterwards, you can do that. You're not obligated to ask anybody any questions. That's up to you. Uh, when the state has finished its case and rest, if you had any motions to file, you could do that. Or if you had any uh, uh, witnesses of your own to testify, you could do that at that point. You don't have to testify at all. The prosecutor <coughs> has the burden of proof in all these three cases beyond reasonable doubt. You don't, have to, you don't have to provide any evidence if you don't want to. You understand that? Yes. Um, how many witnesses potentially do you have? Uh, one. Okay. Uh, and then uh, once we're done, if the case is submitted, if I... Um, can make the decision here. I'll let you know what it is. If I need to take it under advisement, uh, we'll, we'll do that. Do we have a, a, a good address to send uh, 63 Animal Street, uh, number 458? Would that be your mailing address? Yes. So anything we send from the court will get to you there. Yes, sir. Any questions? Uh, I guess can about I, procedure? Uh, can I request the you know, witnesses be sequestered? Yes, you can. I've already asked or advised my witnesses that I will be asking okay. for the same. Okay. My witnesses are all out. Okay. Yeah, so they'll be sequestered and they'll be reminded once they conclude their testimony that they're still sequestered even after their testimony. 
Is there any, just, just to be sure we don't have any problems here, is there anybody beside the one witness, is that potentially yourself or is that someone other than? Uh, it's possibly myself and one other. Okay, is that another person here right yes. now? Okay, that person, we have to identify that person because they have to be sequestered. Uh, Mr. Garrett Ian. Mr. who? Mr. Oh, okay, Garrett, yeah. Yeah. and you have to be outside. You can't discuss your testimony, your the case with anybody, uh, even after the case is concluded until the decision is rendered. Do you understand that? You, you're being sequestered. You have to wait outside. You can't discuss your testimony or the case with anybody else. Do you understand that? Okay, I will say that I have reported on the case publicly, you know, already, so previous. Oh, so for purposes of this case, you can't discuss the case or your testimony with anybody until the case has been concluded and the decision has been rendered. Just, just for purposes of this case and your testimony. Can I also ask that persons who are witnessing this trial in this room not communicate with Mr. Ian, who's out in the lobby about what's happening inside here, and also? Well, if, if anybody tried to communicate with, with anybody outside to the case, that would be, at the very least, contempt and, and beyond that, so. And that includes any live streaming of what's happening inside this room? Yeah, you can, Mr. Ian, do you understand that? Yes, I, I, don't have, I don't have an internet or phone access right okay, now. Okay, so. no, no communication outside the courtroom as far as what's going on in the court. Thank you. And anybody here who would seem to be attempting to do that might have some issues that would have to address. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, any, quite, any further questions? No. Okay, ready to start? Yes. Okay. State calls. I'll have that to the mystery and ask you to
the, this incident drew on for numerous hours. I couldn't give you a complete timeline um, of how long, but several hours to say the least. And was a perimeter set up by the Houston Police Department and other law enforcement officials? Uh, it was. And um, are you familiar with how they established that perimeter? Not initially. Uh, the incident commander uh, initiated the scene. There was Lieutenant Lawrence. Um, he's the one who took care of the initial perimeter. At that time, I was still speaking with Mr. Snow and um, with Sergeant Short and some of the other patrol officers who had responded to this incident. Okay. And what did when you what time did you ultimately leave the area? I believe I left somewhere in the neighborhood of ten thirty, maybe in the evening. Okay. And where did you go? I went back to the King Police Department. Okay. I'm just going to draw your attention to some photographs that are to your right. Uh, do you recognize what's depicted in these photographs? Um, Specifically, um, <clears throat> number one, and do you have a good view of? No, I have a good view. Yes, I recognize uh, photos number one and two. Okay, and what, can you describe those areas? That's the back side um, in both of those photos of the autumn leaf apartments. Um, number two, you can sort of see where the one building uh, forms an exterior corner with the second building. Uh, there's like a row of pine trees in front. Um, that corner is where Mr. Snow took up his uh, position of resistance there, and those trees are somewhat behind where the officers are taking cover, uh, trying to speak with Mr. Snow. Okay, is three another angle of that area, which is closer up? I believe three is from more of where that exterior corner would be, kind of looking out, um, maybe to the left of where Mr. Snow would be standing in his perspective. Okay. And uh, are you familiar with who owns the Autumn Leaf Apartments? Uh, I know that they're owned and operated by Emil uh, Leisure uh, Properties. Right. Did you communicate with them in the course of this investigation? So, yeah, subsequent to this, I had occasion to speak with um, one of the managers there, Steve Leisure, uh, who told me they owned the property and gave me permission to do, conduct some testing on the building there. Okay. Conduction what? Uh, evidence recovery from the uh, spec pull up. And, um, sorry, thank you, I think for all right, please, if you have any questions for this witness, you can ask them now. Uh, I do. Um, so you said that you arrived, uh, so you were there conducting surveillance of the, uh, we thought the suspect was correct. Correct. And then he left the, um, the house and you followed him, correct? Mm, correct. Uh, and he took up a position, I guess indicated by uh, picture one. Is that mm. Yeah, picture one shows it to some degree. Uh, number two shows it slightly better. Defense uh, would like to enter in an exhibit. Um, have you shown her what it is? Yes. I, well, I've shown her. I submitted um, all my exhibits to her. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't know if it's. Proper through this witness without knowing what it is. So, what's, what, what's the exhibit you want to Oh, it's for? a map of the scene. Uh, she also has one up here. I have a larger one. I think it might help. I don't know. All right, and this, well, this assist you in questioning this witness. Is that what you mean? Yes. Okay. Uh, that, um, well, let's see how big it is first. Okay. Okay. Set it on the defendant's table for now for a second in case we have to pick it up and so we don't have to keep switching. I have a piece of tape. I'm going to tape it. Would that be okay? Uh, or is yeah, that but it looks like we're going to have more than one, so uh, you may have to remove it from time to time. And then I also have a, um, a pointer. May I approach the witness and give it to him? A uh, laser pointer? Uh, why don't, rather than use that, why don't we just have the, the witness step around okay. and we can point with his finger. You can ask him to identify things there? Yes. Uh, will you just step around the corner? Sure. So, Mr. Chayester. Just for the record, I'm, I'm fairly familiar with the area generally. Okay. Can you show us the I'd ask you to step. Uh, yeah, this is awkward, but yeah, go ahead. Um, are you I don't care if you can't physically until let me know. Are you familiar with this area, sir? Mm, generally. Um, 
Can you point where the suspect was located to the best? Well, it's, this picture is kind of tree cover. I would say somewhere in this vicinity here, but beyond that generalization, I, I can't be specific. Okay. But um, I guess that, that is an overhead map of the scene to the best of your... It, as best I can tell, there's no... Okay. I, I would assume this is McDonald's and that maybe is Wendy's. There's, there's no other landmark to which I know it, but I would think so. Yes. Well, I have another exhibit at the A, but like a little bit zoomed out. But, um, okay, so the, the suspect was where you pointed. Um, where were you at, uh, when you first... So when the suspect had moved to that area, well, where were you at? Behind one of the trees you know, that I referred to in photos one and two. Okay, and were you there uh, the entire time during the scene? No, I was not. Uh, at what point did you leave the area? I, I left the scene in totality by around 10.30, um, as best I can recall. My position had been assumed by a patrol officer sometime before that. Uh, I don't know the exact time. So you were relieved at some point, and you, um, I guess, moved back from the suspect? Correct. Uh, you described the suspect as taking up a barricaded position, is that correct? I, I said barricaded in the sense of where there's no physical barrier in front of him, but he was taking a position of resistance towards the police that were trying to get him in custody. Um, to the best of your knowledge, once the suspect had entered the area, did he move at all after uh, the police perimeter was established? Move as far as, move his body or move in terms of geographic? Uh, or did he move, yes, geographically, let's say more than 20 feet away from where he was originally at? While at the time I was standing there, he, he would walk and pace a, a few paces. Whether he moved beyond that after I left, I have no idea. You had testified about the perimeter. Could you point on the map where you believe the perimeter was set up? Uh, I couldn't give you a good description of that. Again, I wasn't the incident commander there. Uh, I know I saw officers back in the McDonald's and Wendy's parking lot. Uh, I saw some officers maybe down towards where like the Sprint uh, and the auto parts store would be. Uh, I believe those officers are behind, but I, where they were, I couldn't tell you. Okay. I guess I'd like to put the other map up. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. You still need the witness to be outside the box? Uh, yes. I guess it's, it might need a little bit. You just not pointing out some of that. And I guess this is the same area, just zoomed out a little more. Could you indicate to the best of your knowledge where the perimeter was set up? I think it was probably in front, probably near the drive through lanes or the buildings here okay. uh, by McDonald's and Wendy's. Um, I believe the command post was somewhere down in here. I believe there's a perimeter sort of encircling the command post. I think there's some resources staged over here, and probably a couple more officers there. Um, where the officers were on the backside here, I, I don't know. Uh, regarding the, the pictures, so you uh, took each of those pictures, is that correct? Those look like scene photos that I took, yes. Okay. happen to review any of the video evidence uh, uh, that I, I took on my camera? Well, I'm not certain who took what. There was a video posted to YouTube of the moments directly before the subject um, committed suicide. Uh, I watched that video. Who the author or the reporter was, I, I don't know. Okay. During your time on the scene, do you need, do you need an outside again? No. Okay. Why don't you resume the scene? Okay. Uh, do you have any other questions about this? So during the time that you were on the scene, uh, I believe it was like approximately four hours, does that sound correct? Uh, did you witness uh, the defendant there? Yourself? Yes. 
I, I saw numerous people standing in the McDonald's and Wendy's parking lot. Whether you were among them or not, I don't recall. I don't remember seeing or speaking to you directly. So you did see uh, a number of, I guess we'll call them civilians in the, the general area, is that correct? Yeah, back behind where the perimeter line had been established. Okay. Did you witness any civilians walking through the perimeter? There were civilians as much as we had some family members from uh, the victim here um, with us and, and other personnel like that. But you don't recall specifically if you saw anyone who was not a family member walk through the perimeter? I couldn't tell you whether they were family members or not. There, there was some family there that I recognized by sight, and there was some there that I, that I didn't. Uh, so you had mentioned that uh, Lieutenant Lawrence had set up the perimeter. Um, do you know if he physically uh, walked the perimeter? or? Lieutenant Lawrence set up the command post. Okay. Uh, do you, who, who set up the uh, police tape? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. You do remember seeing police tape, correct? I recall there being, I think, some tape maybe in the McDonald's parking lot area. Okay. So generally, uh, I guess your involvement was you followed the suspect, you went to the, the corner, and then from there, uh, you were basically there until some point and you were relieved, is that correct? At some point, I went left and went back to the station to take up some paperwork. Okay. Were, were you anywhere else uh, at the scene, or just around the suspect? Around the suspect, and then down on like the uh, Ivy Drive area, and okay. maybe back towards that key road where the, I mentioned there was some resources stage. I think I went back for a bottle of water. Uh, I won the fire apparatus there. Okay. Uh, you mentioned on your supplemented narrative that you went to freeking.com and downloaded uh, four photographs and a video uh, from the website, or from YouTube and the website, is that correct? Just acknowledge, Ryan. Why is this relevant? So the defense, uh, the reason I was out there is to act as media. Uh, I'm trying to well, establish. I can't, I, 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 you can take the fact that you, you have properly indicated you may testify, but I can't take facts from you. The, the question is what, what, whether this is relevant to a determination that I have to make here ultimately. That's essentially what we're... May, may I rephrase or re-ask the question? Sure. Are you familiar with freeking.com? Just the same question. Uh, why don't you tell me what you're getting at, and then maybe we can decide whether it's going to be relevant uh, or not. I'm trying to determine if freeking.com uh, is a media organization. Again, I don't see how it's relevant. Assuming it is, for purposes of, of trying to figure out this evidentiary question, what would be your reason for, for asking the question? Uh, my reason would be that uh, the reason I was out there was to act as media. I was doing it you know, on behalf of uh, this website. You know, if, you, well, if you have a witness who wants to testify to that, or if you opt to testify and want to say that's why you were there as part of your defense, you're certainly free to do that. Okay. So I guess, um, so the suspect had not moved from that position uh, at the time that you left the scene, is that correct? Not in terms of great distances geographically, um, okay. short distances. I mean, he was so just walking around. around. Okay. All right, no further questions. Okay, thank you. Are you, okay. Are you still sequestered so you can't discuss your testimony yes, until the case is decided? Would you anticipate recalling Officer Tridester Tri Tri again? Do you anticipate that Officer Tridester will have to be called as part of your case? Uh, no. Okay, all right. So you're, excuse, you're still sequestered, but you don't have to wait in the court. Thank you, Doctor. Okay.
Hello. Hey, we have a seat. Please take your full name and spell your last record. Todd Lawrence, L-A-W-R-E-N-C. And Ryan Coy. With the city of King. King's Police Department. And what's your writing department? I am a lieutenant. And um, draw your attention. Oh, I'm sorry, are you a certified law enforcement officer? I am. And how long have you been with the King's Police Department? Since 1998. 1998, you said? 1998. And draw your attention to July 1st of this year, 2014. Were you on duty? How do you think? What was your shift? I was on duty. I was the OIC of the 5 to 3 shift. And OIC stands for? Officer in charge. And during your shift at about 6 p.m., were you supervising a surveillance that was being uh, conducted with respect to team officers and Matthew Scout? That's correct. And at about that time, did you become aware of a situation that was occurring uh, during that surveillance of Mr. Scout? Yes. And what did you become aware of? Uh, I learned that Sergeant Short and Detective Chester uh, located Mr. Snow in some capacity on Ivy Drive. Uh, they gave chase. During that chase, Mr. Snow pulled out a handgun from a backpack and held it to his body at some point. By the time I got there, uh, I physically observed Mr. Snow have the gun to his head, walking in a northern direction back towards Ivy Drive. Eventually, he locked himself into a corner of one of the buildings uh, on Ivy Drive, an elderly uh, complex there. Okay. And I'm just going to draw your attention to a photograph. And if you can take a look at pictures one, two, and three, do those appear to be um, the areas where Mr. Snow ultimately ended up for a period of time? Yes, he was uh, right here in this corner. So. Okay. Just for purposes of identifying, uh, Mr. Cleveland, the first, the first picture he put up, we'll call that A, and we'll call the second one B. Okay. okay. So when you, when you, as you introduce things, Mr. Cleveland, we use letters and we'll use numbers for that. Okay. Okay. And um, so once you became aware of the situation, you absorbed it for yourself. What did you do, and what were your concerns, immediate concerns about the situation? Um, my responsibilities at that point were to set up a command post, which is a centralized location where information flows in and out and I can direct certain people. But more importantly, I wanted to set a perimeter to keep that incident isolated to one area and keep the general public away from that particular incident. So and what were the reasons you wanted to set up that perimeter? Public safety and the safety of the suspect at this point. And um, when you set up a perimeter, do you use um, police tape at times? Yeah, we use a, a combination of things. We use cones, officers, cruisers, uh, no police tape. And did you use all those things on this particular occasion? We did. And um, when you requested that a perimeter be set up, who did you ask to assist you in establishing that perimeter? It, it, it happened so fast. Um, anytime an oncoming Personnel came from other towns. Um, I direct them in certain locations. Uh, we wanted to, because we were so close to public restaurants, we wanted to close off that parking lot first. So we closed off McDonald's, Wendy's, uh, Pizza Hut, the entrance from Key Road to Ivy Drive. Uh, there's sort of a tree line that runs along Ivy, Ivy Drive. We closed that off. I'm actually going to draw your attention to one of the best exhibits. I mean, this is larger than the states. Maybe this is Defense Exhibit A. This, um, is this a, to appear to be an aerial photograph of the area where the incident occurred. And if you could perhaps um, use this photograph and describe sure. where um, your understanding is of where the perimeter was established. Sure. Um, Just make sure I keep the defendant can see it. Yeah. Sorry, let me see. Um, 
essentially, if the perimeter moved throughout the course of the incident because of crowd control. So in the initial one was set up right about the edge of the paper. And it ran all the way along down here towards the, the entrance or the exit of Pizza Hut. And then it cut across. And you really could only see Ivy Drive a little bit here. But it ran along a tree line on Ivy Drive. I'm going further than I have to. And then it cut up in front of this building here. Can we have them uh, do the larger picture? You can, you, she, she can choose what she wants. If you want to go over it with the larger picture, you can. Okay. And then you think the larger picture would be better? It's talking I, about things outside the scope I, of this I guess so. I just, uh, perhaps. This is um, Defense Exhibit B. It's just a word that we have to work Okay, so the initial one ran right through here, closed off this exit, that's actually an exit, then ran straight across here with tape. And that was generally off tape. A lot of this was uh, cone and cruiser and officers. It's mostly taped through here. It was all taped through here. And then I was actually, the command post was right about here. I really couldn't see how far the tape went in front of the building, but I know tape ran to some point in front of the building here. Um, and I said, like I said, throughout the course of the incident, we actually moved the whole perimeter back to street level at one point. And what was the reason for that? Just a crowd. We just wanted to keep people away. And where did you have officers stationed um, where the police tape was not present? Well, throughout the course, I decided to get more and more officers involved. Uh, I activated the SWAT team. I activated the K-9 officer. Um, and what happened was they ended up, the SWAT team ended up here, roughly probably 20 yards away from where the suspect was held up. And on the other side of this building, I had probably four or five troopers and officer English with his camera. Okay, and what and was your reason? Troop, troopers and what? Officer English with his camera. And what was your reason for that? Uh, we had him secure here. The only way he could leave this area where was to run north. So if he decided to run north, we would have had the SWAT team running after him and we would have released the dog from this side to go to get him and bring him down. And um, and do you consider those officers where you had them stationed there to be part of the perimeter? Yes. And if you you can have a seat. Um, did you also uh, call for ambulances to set up nearby? Yes. Yeah. Here? You... The fire department ended up being at the entrance of Ivy Drive and Key Road, so that blocked cars from coming in as well. And um, did you evacuate buildings? Yes. And and I'm sorry, if you wouldn't mind, just perhaps you could do it from where you're sitting. You could just describe which buildings had activated and why. Uh, at this point here, this, all these buildings here, we evacuated all the people, and we asked them to go on to this side of the yellow tape. Okay. And that was for public safety, because of, God forbid there was a shootout or something that we didn't want any grounds entering the apartment and hitting anybody who reside there. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, truly have a this. And um, did you also have a crisis negotiator present? Yes. And how long would you say it took to accomplish all of those initial steps that you took to secure the area? Uh, to get everyone in and secure everything was about an hour to get it. And how long did the incident last with Mr. Snow? 4.5 hours. And was Mr. Snow ultimately taken to the hospital by ambulance? Yes, he was. And did um, the Kim Police Department recover the firearm that was used in the situation? They did. Okay, and at some point did you become aware of the situation that was taking place with Officer Josh English and his canine and the other troopers that were set up um, close by on the other side of the building that you had pointed to earlier, um, nearby where the actual standoff was taking place? Yes. 
And what was that situation? Um, he called me on the radio and told me that there were people coming near them and close to him that were drawing their attention away at what they were supposed to be doing, their main objective. And um, what was the ultimate resolution of that? I, I believe I sent two officers over there to assist them, but what transpired after that, I, I don't know. Um, and do you support any decisions that they made uh, with respect to keeping that particular area safe? Um, Officer English and his Canada had a very important role in that perimeter. Um, he, probably the most vital part of the whole thing because if we did escape out that route, um, his canine would have been what would have stopped him from going any further north. So, yes. Thank you. Okay, any questions for this witness? <coughs> uh, Mr. Lawrence, when did you arrive on the scene? I believe they started their surveillance around 1800, which I believe is 6, six o'clock. Um, maybe within a half hour? I, I'm really not sure. So when you arrived, uh, you did a number of things, um, including set up a perimeter, is that correct? That's correct. And you used uh, tape, cones, officers, cruisers, is that correct? That is correct. Um, bar, were, did you use police officers to mark the edge of the perimeter? Yes, specifically in that. that most more than part there. When, just to, I'm, I'm sure when you say the most northern part, you mean? Do you mind that? Yeah. yeah. This would be the, the east side of the building, west, south, the northern part would have been right about here. Once the suspect had, um, can you, I guess, approach the map again? Uh, can you indicate where the suspect was located? Sure. Um, these buildings stagger. So, sort of like a scene. He was in this just, corner. Can you just lean back a little bit? I'm oh, sorry. He was in this corner right here at the very last building. In the northern part of this building shot. When you arrived on scene, was he there? Nope. Um, I actually saw him here, and he slowly walked this way. Because so we're taking this when you say here, just kind of point uh, out. Sorry. I mean, I don't this, is, this is the back parking lot of a cell phone place and an auto body place, um, auto parts store. And he started walking in the north east direction towards what we thought, initially I thought he was going to head towards McDonald's. Um, but then he just cut along this tree line and he actually sat himself right down in that little corner of the building. Uh, so once he was in that corner, um, would you say that he moved from that position like no. geographically? No. Would you, um, were, were there officers nearby the suspect in the corner? Yes, we had. Um, are you talking initial response or are you talking once we were able to set up and get everyone where I needed them to be? I guess, um, can you answer both? Sure. The initial response was I, I went back down here to set up the command post to start everyone coming in to assist. But initially, uh, he was in that corner. We had about the entire ship there, so four to five guys standing right here on this tree line speaking with him. And we had one guy sneak down into this tree line over here. That was the initial. Well into the incident, um, the tactical team showed up, so they took over 
Um, this tree line right here, we had officers lined up at all the, the key points here to make sure people were held back. Um, this area here by the command post was pretty loaded with officers um, in order to direct them. Uh, and we had officers up here on this side as well. And I believe we had some here to maintain the integrity of this area here so people wouldn't keep driving. Because this there's another apartment building here and there's no way to leave without going to the command post and we weren't allowing that to happen. Uh, so after you set up the command post, you set up the perimeter, is that correct? Yes. Um, who, uh, the state asked who assisted in setting up the perimeter, and I don't believe you answered that. Who, who actually set up the perimeter? Uh, I guess it would have been me. I would have, I would have directed people who were coming to the command post where to go. So I would have told them I needed the parking lot of McDonald's closed off. I would have told them I needed Wendy's closed off. Pizza Hut. I would have told them I needed a line to get across um, Ivy Drive, the initial part of Ivy Drive, close that up. Because initially we didn't have all the fire trucks and ambulances located here. Um, I would have asked for this area to be closed off because people who couldn't get home were coming to the watch here or were parking here and actually walk into their residences. Um, and I would have had a line going from somewhere around here up because I needed, once we evacuated this building, this, this apartment area, I would have needed them on the other side of the line. So you directed officers to set up the perimeter. Uh, did you actually walk the perimeter once it was set up? No, I never left the command post. Okay. So you arrived on scene, you set up the command post. Uh, you were there until uh, what time were you at the command post the entire time of this? Yes. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that there were uh, crowds nearby. Um, can you describe that? Maybe the well, initial one. Sure. That, There's, uh, um, going? Well, he was here, suspect, and he was very visible. This is it looks dense here, but it's not dense when you're on the ground level. Um, so they wanted to see what was going on. And in order to do that, crowds developed, mostly here in the Pizza Hut parking lot, um, a lot in the Wendy's parking lot right here. Um, and I guess not so much here um, in the McDonald's parking lot because right around here, the tree line gets really thick. Mm -hmm. And you, you really can't see anything. Uh, did you move the perimeter uh, at any point during the scene? The perimeter on the east side, certainly. On the east side. Which would be, uh, this in Pizza Hut stayed intact mostly, but certainly Wendy's and McDonald's would move back further. So you mentioned that you moved the perimeter back to a, a street level. What did you mean by that? Eventually, we moved all the, the crowd in these two parking lots, which is Wendy's and McDonald's. We moved them completely out of the parking lots, and we blocked off their entrances to their business, to their restaurant. Now, once the tactical team had arrived, uh, how many officers were around the suspect? Six or eight tactical guys. Uh, so during the initial scene, uh, was there an officer north of the suspect? Yes. Was that off did that officer ever move? Yes, he did. Okay. Where did he move to? Um, Pitch is not here anymore, but there is a door that was probably five feet. See this red door here? Not oh, right here, sorry. Yep. Um, this is no more than 15 feet away from where he was the whole time. Mm -hmm. And if he wanted to try to break into this, he'd be right into the apartment building. And we certainly didn't want that. So the guy that I had north, which was Officer Zanor, I had to move into 
that hallway on the other side. So in theory, our only line of defense were the officers on this north side and the SWAT team that was here. If he decided to run north, we would have intercepted it here. Because right here is Pearl Street. And there's a big wooden fence right here, so there's some certain barriers in his in his way. Um, could, you, could you put that one back up? Sure. So referring to that red door, was that door secure? To our knowledge, but at the time, no one knew. So the suspect was in the corner. Um, I guess you know, if you refer to uh, not picture one. Sure. He was approximately 15 feet from the right door. Is that correct? Yeah, he, he huddled in this area, as far as I can tell, because where I was in the crime uh, command post, excuse me, I, I couldn't see him. But I, I could see parts of the red door. So I didn't see him by the red door much. So that was, I'm assuming he spent most of his time underneath these windows and in that car. But I wouldn't know. If you refer to picture two in the corner, um, so the suspect was in the little, I guess, alcove, the corner there, is that correct? Yes. Uh, approximately how far does that corner jut out? 10 feet. Okay. 10 feet, 10 feet, yeah. I don't know. Uh, can you, I guess, uh, place that one down and refer to, um, I guess I'd like to put, well, that one's fine. So on, on exhibit B here. Um, you talk about this photograph? Yes, sir. Okay. The suspect was in the corner. Uh, were there any officers southeast of the suspect? And if so, can you indicate where they are? This, course, this would be the southeast direction. Yep. And we had the entire, well, six to eight SWAT guy when I was here. Okay. We had how many officers decided to hang out in the command post okay. to do myself. So if he was to come around that corner, he'd run into our SWAT team. If they made it past the SWAT team, then he would have to go through the command post. And I would imagine that would be somewhat difficult for him to do. Mm -hmm. So if he went north, as I said before, we had four or five state troopers and officer English and his K-9 to intercept them, plus SWAT team filtering in behind him. At any point did the suspect try the red door indicated in picture one? I don't know. <laughs> would, would that have been a potential uh, uh, route for escape for the suspect? Yes, I'm going to caution both sides. I've given both prosecutor and defendant a lot of latitude on questions about the details of this operation, if that's what we can call it. But I guess I'd like to focus on what the charges are here and the extent to, the extent to which the details of the operation bear on that. They're relevant, but we don't have to do an entire you know, re-examination of the scene here. I'm afraid we're getting off the track here. And, and if I could just add, with respect to the also. state's questions, um, I, he's charged with a specific section of the disorderly conduct statute, which lays out that the police have to have probable cause to set up the perimeter. I, I understand that, but, the, but, but the, the detail is more focused on the propriety and, and, the, and the tactics that are set up here as, as opposed to what I'm here to determine. So. I'm sure some of it is relevant, but a lot of it, I've said I've given you both latitude, a lot of it really isn't isn't going to help me as far as the determinations I have to make here. So. I, I think I'm most of the things I have to right. make, understand. Okay. okay. Um, so the question is, the question that you asked was whether whether he tried to use the red door, is that the question? Does it mean to escape? I believe the answer to that one. Okay. Um, so there were uh, three points of escape, potentially, is that correct? Yes. Uh, 
So during your time at the command post, so you'd set up the perimeter. Um, did you witness any civilians walk through the perimeter? The only time we had civilians come through the, through the perimeter to the command post were family members of the suspect. And that was done to gather intel and to actually try to help us defuse this whole situation. So yes. So to your knowledge, no one else, no other civilians walked through the perimeter, is that correct? That's correct, to my knowledge. Can you indicate, once again, where the uh, caution tape was on the uh, west side of <coughs> Building 7? And Building 7 is the one with the suspect. The one I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Um, it would have jetted out from the bottom of Ivy Drive here and would have gone in the northern direction. Okay. Where it ended up, I can't tell you because I never saw. I know it was present, I just don't know how far it went. Was there any tape in front of building 13? If building 13 is, that's correct, yes. Which one? Okay. I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, when, when did you become aware of, uh, I guess, my presence on the scene? Um, when you were walked through the command post and handcuffs? So you didn't, uh, until that point, you didn't hear anything on the radio or? Oh, I did, I didn't know it was you. Okay. Uh, I guess I, I'd like to uh, set up um, an audio, would that be okay? Uh, like a TV to play an audio, maybe I could do it from the audio uh, So I requested uh, copies of the, this, uh, I call it the scanner, but the, uh, the radio traffic during the uh, during the scene. I like to play it with you. For what purpose? Uh, I'd like to ask the witness about it. For what purpose? Oh, I'm trying to determine who, who it was on the radio. I'm not sure. Yep, and how will that help? Um, so on the radio, uh, it was stated that the defendant was uh, creeping up on the scene, and that, that's the reason he was arrested. So I guess I'd like to know. Uh, you have a witness who testified to that? Yes. Yeah, we'll have a witness who testified. Okay. Uh, do you know where um, where I was uh, before I was arrested? Do you have any knowledge of that? No. Do you know where the arrest took place? No. Okay. Requested, is he excused? Or? Yes, it's present. Mr. Payton, do you need to tell uh, Lawrence to stick around? Uh, okay, so you're still sequestered. You can't discuss your testimony, but you don't have to remain in court. Yes, sir. Thank you. Joshua Nels English, E N G L I S H. I'm currently employed by the city of Keene as a police officer. And for how long have you been so? I've worked for Keene since August of 2004. And are you a certified law enforcement officer? I am. Are you also a certified Keene officer? Yes. And um, how long have you been a Keene officer? Since 2010. And um, do you have to keep your training regular with respect to your Keene? Yes. And how often do you? We attend formal canine training three times a month. And uh, what is your canine's name? 
Canine Patriot. Drawing your attention to July 1st of this year, 2014, at about 6.30 on the evening, were you either on duty with the Kingsley Police Department or were you called in to assist with the situation? I was called in to assist. And what, in what capacity were you called in to assist as? Uh, I was called in to assist with uh, K-9 Patriot. And did you respond promptly? I did. And were you in full uniform? I was. And uh, can you describe just basically what you were wearing? I was wearing a, uh, a, a K-9 call-out uniform. It's black. It's more of a tactical uniform. It does bear the same patches that I'm wearing on either shoulder. When I arrived on scene, I additionally donned a ballistic vest and a Kevlar helmet. And when you arrived, did you communicate with Lieutenant Lawrence as a command officer? Yeah. And where did you respond to after communicating with Lieutenant Lawrence? May I show you on the Absolutely. And back and around? Sure. This is an aerial map. This is Defense Exhibit B. Um, does, is that helpful for you, or would you prefer photographs? The photograph would be more helpful. Just, just stick around. Our, our position would have been adjacent to this uh, U-bush. Okay. And this is States uh, 5 for ID. Um, that would be better. And States 6, so you're pointing to um, in between these two buildings or? Yes, in between these, those two buildings. Okay. And um, you know. Thank you. And what was your purpose at that location? Uh, my purpose with, with Canine Patriot was to prevent the, uh, there was an armed suspect with a handgun on the opposite side of that building. And our position was essentially to prevent that subject from fleeing into uh, the Pearl Street area. And were you present there at that location with other law enforcement officers? I was. And who were they? Uh, New Hampshire State Police Trooper Yaros, as well as Trooper E. Okay, and ultimately, were you joined by another state trooper? Uh, yes. And who was that? Uh, Sergeant Phil Gates. And about how long were you positioned there for? Okay. I'm not positive. I think it was a matter of hours. I don't know the exact time frame. Okay, was one of your positions, all your responsibilities there is to also maintain a perimeter of That's the area? Right. Yes. And later in the evening, after you arrived, after some time had passed, what if any non law enforcement personnel, um, specifically civilians, entered into that area? No, the defendant. Okay, and what was was there only one person that entered that area, one civilian, aside from law enforcement? That I saw. Okay. And for the time that you were there? Yes. And when did you first become aware of the defendant? And you um, recognized, you just named your, I'm sorry, excuse me, you just acknowledged that it was the defendant that you saw come to the area. Um, do you know his name? James Goodwin. Will the state, state, will the record reflect the witness identified the defendant? Yes. Thank you. Um, Okay, what point did you first see the defendant come onto that scene? Um, Your Honor, may I approach the diagram? Why don't you stay out there in case, because there'll be more questions, I'm sure. Okay. Just make sure everyone can see where you're pointing at. So. Again, as I stated, um, Canine Patriot, the state troopers and I were staged on a perimeter in the area of this location here. I observed, when I first observed the defendant, James Cleveland, he was approaching us from the, this direction. And you're pointing at, to, at um, States 6, six right? Six. Okay. And, uh, when, and what did you first observe with respect to the defendant? I, well, <clears throat> my observation was keyed off on the response of another trooper as well as my partner. And um, you went by partner, you mean? Canine Patriot. Um, and when I turned to look at what Canine Patriot and the other, and uh, Trooper Eaton were um, noticing, I observed the defendant with his shoulders down, head up, rapidly approaching our position. In his hand, he, in his hands, 
he was carrying what at first looked to be a, a, what I saw was a long cylindrical object generated or oriented to the ground. Um, I later just observed that he was carrying a camera of some kind on a bipod. Was it dark or was it light out of his time? I would say it was approaching dark. And um, how, if at all, did the defendant's actions distract K-9 Patriot? Uh, well, K uh, as I say, K-9, I felt tension in the leash. K-9 Patriot positioned himself for oriented, orienting himself to the the location of the suspect that we were actually there for, um, and Cannon Patriot became distracted by the defendant and turned and focused his attention towards him. And so what were your immediate concerns at that point? Well, my concern was if the uh, suspect had fled at that point, we certainly would have been delayed in our response time from preventing him from entering a populated area. <laughs> or another law enforcement officer that was present with you approach the defendant and converse with him? Uh, Trooper Yaros, <laughs> I believe. And what was the result of that initial interaction? At that point, it seemed like uh, Trooper Gazer additionally had to come over and assist. And at some point, um, I would say in this area, uh, Mr. Cleveland was escorted. So I would be pointing to picture eight. Um, Mr. Cleveland was escorted away from the area. Okay. So initially, was he initially escorted a short distance and then again later? That's how I remember it. Okay. When he was initially escorted a certain distance by um, Trooper Garros, yes. uh, was K-9 Patriot still distracted? For some time. Okay. And then did um, trooper gays or remedy the situation altogether. Sergeant, at some point, Sergeant gave At some point, I had radioed to Lieutenant Lawrence um, that we needed assistance with uh, dealing with Mr. Cleveland. Um, prior to their arrival, um, Sergeant Gazer had shown up and assisted <coughs> Trooper Yaros. And was ultimately was the defendant escorted away all from this yes. particular area altogether. Yes. And then was um, K-9 Patriot again engaged in his actual task at the end? Correct. Okay. Thank you, nothing more. Okay, any questions for this witness? So, Mr. English, you arrived on scene, you went to the command post, and Mr. Lawrence told you to uh, go to the position would you, I guess, put the, the pictures down and refer to the big picture of defense exhibit B? Absolutely. Um, yes. Thank you. Just wait a second on that. Okay. Can you indicate where the command post was? Jackson um, Robinson, this, there was a witness earlier who testified with direct knowledge. Of well, I think, I think the defendant is trying to establish where the perimeter was. That's correct. And, and, uh, I guess ultimately to justify the actions here, but um, just make sure you step back. So. Yes, Your Honor. I, I remember it to be in the, this general area. And then would you, I guess, uh, where were you stationed uh, for I guess, the duration of the scene? I would place myself on the big picture in this area. Uh, so building seven is the, the eastmost building, the, I guess kind of the peninsula, like Florida, if you will. Uh, okay. So from the command post, uh, which side of the building did you walk to get to your, your station? I would have walked through this, this area. Did you notice any tape no set up? I don't recall. Okay. Uh, do you remember seeing any tape while you were out there? I, I believe there was tape. I don't recall what time it was set up. Okay. Uh, you mentioned the, the U bush uh, that was in the state exhibit, picture five, if you want to look at it. It was just like a bush.
can you refer on Exhibit B, the big map, uh, where that bush is located? That bush would be the corner. You would have previously referred to this as Building 7, so that would be in that general area. Where did you believe the suspect was when you were on the scene? I believed he was on this side of Building 7. Okay. Um, approximately how far did you think you were away from the suspect? I thought I was on the opposite side of the building then. Okay. I, I couldn't get it to you in feet or yards. So you were adjacent to the view bush, is that correct? That would be my best location. Okay. As you're facing exhibit five, I would have been to the right of it. first noticed my presence? Uh, as I already testified, um, I noticed your presence based on the reaction of Canine Patriot as well as Cooper Eaton. Okay. Uh, can you refer to exhibit, uh, exhibit B? Is this exhibit uh, B? Yes. Uh, the big picture, sorry. Actually, can we put exhibit A up? That's the other picture. I don't know where it went. Is it behind, behind this? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So when you first noticed me, can you indicate on the map where you believe I was? You would have been behind this row of buildings here. Looking at it from this angle, the other pictures would just show it better. Yeah. Do uh, you put the other pictures up? Absolutely. Refer to them. As I recall, you would have been in this general area. Okay. Can you point? I'm pointing to picture six. Picture six. Uh, so I, I approached. To your knowledge, was the area that I was in roped off? I, I do not recall. So when you noticed me, uh, what did I appear to be doing? At first, when I saw you, you were appeared to be sneaking up on me. That's what I saw. See, so how was the the tripod? Well, I guess it's relevant. So when I approached, did I stop at any point? I don't recall. Uh, approximately how far away was I? I would place you and I believe- How far away I, from, from him? Yes. I, I believe my report places you at around 50 feet or so. Okay. I guess, could you refer to exhibit A, the big picture? <laughs> See, it's not really a scale, but is this is this a is this a mm -hmm. yes, sir. Okay. Uh, would you indicate where you believe I was when you noticed me? Somewhere, somewhere along here. Okay. Uh, 
Um, is it possible that I, I stopped? Did you notice that at all? It's entirely possible. Did you witness me setting up a tripod? I'm sorry, witness what? Witness me setting up a tripod? I don't recall. Okay. Um, so once I stopped, uh, was there a trooper who approached me? There was. Um, who was that? Uh, trooper Yaros. And what happened once Trooper Yaros approached me? He and you had some conversation. Did anything else happen? I, I don't recall. Uh, did Trooper Yaros come back? Come back. Come back to your group of officers? Yeah, he come back to the station, I guess. He may have. Okay. Uh, did you notice that uh, did I move back at all after Trooper Yaros talked to me? I don't recall. Sergeant Gazer to come up to you, yes. Uh, did you happen to witness any of the interaction between Sergeant Gazer and myself? I don't recall. Okay. Uh, so when I approached, uh, you recognized who I was, correct? That's correct. Uh, what do you think I was doing there? associated with the free team group. Okay. Have you ever witnessed me uh, before this incident? Is that your question? Or have you seen me? Yes, before this, uh, this incident. Is the question, have you, has he seen you any time before yes. July 1st? Yeah. Well, you can answer it, I don't. But have you seen any before July 1st? Yes, sir. Uh, do you recall where you remember seeing me? Um, several occasions. So you mentioned uh, Free Keen. Uh, what interactions during the past year has Free Keen had with the Keen Police Department yourself specifically? Why, why are those prior interactions important to the decisions I have to make in this case? Um, I'm trying to show the reason I was there. I was acting as media. So uh, that, as I said before, if you have a witness to establish your okay. defense, or if you want to choose to testify, it's up to you. Uh, did you see me being escorted away from the area? I believe so. Who was escorting you? I believe it was Sergeant Gazer. <coughs> Where did that occur? Can you refer to now? Again, um, as I previously testified, it would have been in the area behind um, this row of buildings. Is it possible, was it at the end of Building 13, Building 13 being the East to West Building? Can you remind, remind me which one that is? Approach. Oh, did you know which one 13? I'm not certain, Your Honor. Which, I know it was identified before, but I can't remember. Can I approach? Just a second. I think I might have that. Yes, I know. Okay. You may have to point out the specific one you're talking about. He doesn't know it by number 13. So, do you see the line of cars in the parking lot? Yes. Um, the building north of that is building 13. Okay. Where did the escorting take place? Again, James, I don't recall. Okay. 
did it occur at the end of Building 13? As I already testified, it would have been in the area behind this, somewhere behind this wall building. Did you put in your report that it was at the end of Building 13? I very well could have. Okay. I guess, could you indicate where the end of Building 13 is? You already told me where it is. It would be here. So you're, you're saying that's where the end of, uh, Building 13, for clarification, is the entire, the three buildings. Okay. Yeah. So where do you, I guess, you put, it was at the end of Building 13. I guess, would you point, what, you, what did you mean when you wrote that? Can you point where? Well, you, as you've already explained it, I believe you had said that I put it in my report that it was at the end of Building 13. So if you're telling me that this the whole thing is Building 13, then that would put you over here. Okay. Um, I guess um, I don't think I needed to point to the map anymore. Uh, I, I think I have a few more questions, and then that's it. So okay. If you'd like to read I'm, I'm just saying it just in case. Okay. Okay. Uh, when you arrived on scene, uh, is it possible that there are gaps in the table? I don't recall. It's entirely possible. Okay. So you didn't set up the tape, and basically, uh, is it fair to say that your involvement was from the command post to, I'll, I'll call it your station, adjacent to the U bush? That's correct. Okay. Uh, during the interactions I had with the troopers, uh, did you notice anything about them? Or do you have any observations? Do that they were in full? Okay. Can you be more specific? The objection is vague. Did you witness any of the troopers talking to me? Did I witness the troopers talking to you? Yes. Did you overhear any of the things that were said to me? No, I did not. Could you describe the tone of, of the troopers that this spoke to me? You can ask the troopers. Okay, I'll ask the troopers. Well, he can ask what he observed, you know, or say you are. Sorry, Your Honor? You can answer that question if you heard, if you, if you observed anything in the tone of voice of the troopers when they were interacting with the defendant. Thank you. Okay. Uh, how long have you had K9 as your partner? K9 Patriot? Yes. Has been my partner since 2000. Uh, would you? Uh, you mentioned that the canine had become distracted. Is that correct? Canine Patriot. Okay, yes. canine Patriot. Yes. Um, have, have there been any points in your experience? Uh, does canine Patriot become distracted easily? No. How is his general nature when he's interacting with the public? Depends on what that interaction is. Okay. Does he ever bark and growl and, I guess, act up towards the public? Depends on where he is. Okay. That would be more specific. Okay, no further questions. Okay, can you get your right? Just a brief question. The entire time, excuse me, sorry, that. Um, was Canine Patriot distracted, in your opinion, for the entire time the defendant was in that area? No. I'm sorry. Okay. No, he was not. Um, <clears throat> Canine Patriot and I were staged in a position for an un what, what I took to be an unknown period of time to avoid stress and pressure on the animal. <clears throat> I don't tell him that we're doing anything. He basically has free time. So the canine patriot was free to lay down, sit, <coughs> relieve himself as he could. He was not in any kind of formal appeal. He was oriented into the direction that I felt I may need to deploy him if that became an issue. However, as far as he knew, he was with his handler, and we were, and he had. And then, just 
Just to clarify, mm -hmm. Ken Hendrick was distracted when the defendant came on the scene. Right. Okay. It was the behavior changer at canine page. It was a behavior change at canine page grid, along with Sergeant or Trooper Eaton, that caused me to notice the defendant. Okay. And did you remain in that post until the situation concluded? That's correct. And was the defendant the only civilian that you saw come into the area while you were there? He was. Okay, Anything else based on the questions that were just asked and reiterated? Uh, so once K9, K9 Patriot is distracted, is it possible to calm them? Absolutely. Uh, did you attempt to calm them? I did. Um, after I moved back or was moved back, was he still distracted? At times. Okay. No further questions. Before you go, just while I have you there, could you just point as specifically as you can as to where the U was that you said you were on, on that picture there? In this big one? Yeah. Your Honor, I would place it, it, it may even be green okay. here, but I would place it. I just want to be sure. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, you're excused. You're still sequestered. You can't discuss your testimony until the case has been decided. Uh, I don't, is he on duty? Or? I don't believe so. Do you need him, yes, him to hang around the courthouse? Yes, sir. Okay, then you're excused. Thank you. Who's this witness? Trevor sent to secure several uh, keen cruisers that were parked uh, around the area uh, that had been left at the onset of the incident. Um, after that, I was then tasked to recover a holster that had been reported um, on the ground somewhere in the area of Staples. I located the holster um, and returned it to Lieutenant Lawrence along with some other items that had been turned in uh, by a bystander. And then after that, I was tasked to relieve some Swansea officers who were posted on the corner of Building 7 and okay. maintain that position. And I'm just going to ask you that, um, if you recognize this particular aerial photo of the scene, um, could you describe which particular building you evacuated and then where you set up post? Sure. And if you need to get up, you can. Okay. And this is Defense Exhibit A. I believe this is building seven. I'm not positive on the number, but this was the building I evacuated. And then eventually we posted up somewhere in this area on the corner between these two corners. Who did you, um, who were you posted there with? Uh, Trooper J.C. 
Jason Yaros. Any other officers join you at any time? Uh, eventually, uh, Officer Josh English. And while you were at that location, did you um, notice any civilian that came onto the scene? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I thought to show you some photographs. Okay, and uh, at what point did you notice someone coming onto the scene, and do you remember what time that was? I don't remember what time it was exactly. I know we'd been there for uh, a few hours at that point. It, it was dark at that time. <clears throat> we were stationed um, behind the bush on photo number five, and our focus was in the direction of that photo where it was taken, so we were looking east, toward the east side of the building. Um, and at one point, a civilian came up behind us. And how did you first notice that person? Um, I happened to glance over my shoulder and saw a person um, walking toward me. Okay. And what did you notice with respect to the person that was walking towards you? Um, my initial thought, well, I initially noticed as a um, what appeared to be a, a long metal cylinder item um, held diagonally. Um, my initial reaction was that I thought it may be a weapon. Um, I quickly realized it wasn't, but I began to turn to confront the person, realized it was uh, a camera tripod, and at that point I told the person that he needed to leave the area. And um, how close did you ultimately get to this person? I would estimate maybe 15 or 20 feet. And were you able to recognize who it was from that distance? No, I wasn't. And how did the person respond when you asked him to leave the area? He said okay and started to back away. And where did, did you see where he ended up? Uh, he went back toward the, the other building to our west and stopped in that area. Okay, and if you could just um, describe, um, using the photos, where you first saw him. And um, where at that you know, point was where you asked him to back up. Okay, uh, can I get up? Sure. <clears throat> so in photo seven, we were in this area of the bush focused toward the wood line here. The person came up from behind us. Uh, we spoke with him right around this area. Um, said something to the effect of you need to go back to wherever the way you just came from. He said okay no something to the effect of okay no problem began to back up um, and he came back to this area and stopped and at that point Trooper Yaros went to speak with him and I focused my attention back on my area of responsibility. And what were your concerns when the civilian appeared? My initial concern was for my own safety. Um, I know the the individual involved in the initial incident had been on the phone with people. I didn't know if somebody was coming in to try to assist him and harm us or get him out of there. Um, that was my initial concern. I quickly realized it was not a weapon that he had. Um, and it became concerned that the person or the civilian was in a dangerous area. As we were in a dangerous area, if the person involved in the confrontation who was armed decided to come around and flee, we were there to stop them. Um, I was concerned that if the person shot at us, that the civilian could be injured as well, being that he would be downrange from that suspect. And um, was part of your task there um, to also maintain a perimeter? Yes. Um, while we were there, our initial task was as a perimeter unit in case the person decided to come around the building toward us. We were supposed to stop them. Uh, actually, at one point while I was on the scene there, I noticed people in the woods beyond um, the backyard area, and I notified the command post that those people leave the area as well. Um, and, and I'm going to, when you're talking about the area, I'm going to show you because it's today. Can you describe where that was that you were just talking about? Once again, we were in this area here. Um, there's, this is an open yard, and we could see or hear people. Uh, there's some houses 
out here outside the field, and they were out in the yard, um, and we alerted the command post that they could possibly be in a dangerous area too. So, the team officers went to speak with them. And, and to the best of your knowledge, where was that area uh, running? The yeah, the, I, I don't know where they went, but they left. Uh, they were they were not outside after the officers spoke with them. And do perimeters expand from time to time based on public safety? Yes. And did that happen here? Um, yeah, at that point, it did. I mean, we saw that those people, there's no officers there, but we saw that those people were in a dangerous area, so the officers moved over to, to talk to them and remove them from that area. And were you there um, until the situation concluded? Yes. And did any other civilians, aside from that one person you were just discussing, come onto that scene, aside from the people that were in the distance in the woods? No. Thank you. Okay. Perhaps Cleveland? So Mr. Eaton, uh, what time did you arrive on the scene? Around 6 o'clock p.m. You went to the command post and you're given some various tasks, including evacuating the building. Uh, were all the people removed from the building? No. Can you refer to exhibit, uh, I think that's A or B, I think that's B, exhibit B, the big picture, um, where building seven is? The aerial? Yes, sir. <coughs> Again, I'm not positive that it's the correct number of buildings, but A, correct? <coughs> uh, yes, that's correct, sorry. I believe this was building seven. Um, again, I'm not positive on the number, but this was the building we evacuated. Uh, so you went in the building and you evacuated people. Uh, would you evacuate building 13? Uh, building 13, I guess, could you remain up here? Sure. Thank you. Uh, do you see the line of cars in the parking lot? Yes. Uh, so building 13 is the one north of it, the three. It's right here. That's correct. Do you evacuate that building? No, we didn't. Okay. Why not? I wasn't instructed to. Okay. So you mentioned that you uh, secured a backpack. I guess could you, uh, would you put, I can't remember now, I think it's B, B up. Uh, 
behind Building 13. And, and where were you? I was in the area between Building 13 and 7, closer to Building 7. Okay. Personally, how far was I when I first arrived? <coughs> Again, my best uh, recollection was somewhere 15 to 20 feet when I first spoke with you. So when you noticed me, what was your, uh, did you say anything to me? I believe I said you need to go back to where it was you came from, something along those lines. Uh, did you say that when you were at your station? Did I, did, you, did I say that while I was at the uh, station? So while you were on, on the corner, which would be, the northwest corner of Building 7. Mm -hmm. uh, could you indicate where the northwest corner of Building 7 is? Right up in this area. And that's where you were, correct? Yes. Uh, did you speak to me from that location? Yes. Okay. I turned around. I may have taken a step or two towards you. Uh, and then we spoke. Uh, did you approach me? Did you walk towards me before you spoke to me? I may have. Approximately how far did you walk? Uh, a few steps, if that's my recollection. Okay. What was my response when you first spoke to me? You said okay, and then began to back up. Something like that, okay, no problem, something along those lines. And then what happened next? Uh, we began to back up. I turned around and focused on my responsibility again, and with regards, walked towards you and had a conversation with you. I believe you moved your back further. So, so I moved back, and then you went back to the group of officers? Yes. Uh, when you walked up to me, uh, and I moved back, did you walk with me as I was moving back? No. I wouldn't say I walked up to you. I took a few steps toward you, but I don't think we were any closer than 15 or 20 feet away. And uh, I didn't walk with you at the time. Did another trooper approach me? Yes. Who was that trooper? Trooper Yaros. <coughs> Did you overhear my conversation with Trooper Yaros? <coughs> no. Did you have, did you see where Trooper Yaris went to? I saw you guys went back along, somewhere further back, building 13. Okay. But again, my main focus was back toward the uh, back of building 7. Uh, did you ever ID yourself to me? No. Did you overhear any of the conversation I had with either Trooper Yaros or Trooper Gazer? No, I didn't. From your location, did you have a line of sight to the suspect? No. Where was the suspect located? Um, on the east side of Building 7, somewhere around this first alcove. At the time, did you know he was armed? Yes. Did you know what kind of weapon he had? Uh, <coughs> I know he had a gun. Okay. Um, I don't I believe. I know now he had a pistol um, or a revolver, something along those lines. Um, I can't say for 
certain that I knew that specifically at that time, but I knew he had a firearm. Uh, did you witness myself in that area? Um, I saw, when I first saw you, you were closer to me, and then I saw you uh, escorted back further in that area by the other troopers. Did you witness my arrest? No. Did you overhear any conversation? No. Did you hear any yelling? No. So you mentioned that you were part of the perimeter unit. What does that mean? We were part of a, a perimeter, which is a group of officers that are tasked with containing the situation. Was the, I guess we'll call it the alleyway in picture eight, was that marked off to your knowledge? No. OK, no further questions. You would do it. Do you consider that area you saw the defendant in part of the perimeter? Uh, we will, I guess it would be fair to say, um, in my mind, where it was taped off, that building acted as a barrier in and of itself. Um, to my knowledge, this area wasn't marked off specifically, but it was definitely an area <coughs> where uh, to be in that area is a dangerous situation. And you again indicated earlier that perimeters often expand based on necessity. Is that right? Yes. And that did that happen here? It did. Again, okay. Based on those questions, do you have any questions for me? Uh, could you refer to Defense Exhibit B, which is the map? Uh, so you mentioned the perimeter. Uh, so on on the west side of Building 7, which is, are you familiar with which building that is? Right here. Okay. So over here would be the west side. Uh, where did you see the caution tape? Can you indicate with your... Again, it was somewhere along this okay. area. Okay, no further questions? Okay. I just want to ask a question. What, about what time of day or evening or night was it that, that you first noticed the defendant there and, and what were the lighting conditions? It was uh, dark, Your Honor. Um, I, I don't have a specific time, but it was some time into the incident. Um, you know, a crowd had begun to gather in other areas. I mean, the incident had been going on. I'm just trying to get a sense of the time. And, and was the area maybe a few hours into the incident? Was the area where the defendant was observed by you lit? Artificially? The, I don't recall if there was a, a, there may have been like an outside light here at one of the, the doorway, but it was generally dark. Yeah. Did you have any questions based on that? Based on that, did you have any questions? So it's possible that there was lighting on the north side of Building 13, correct? It's possible. Further questions? You still sequestered. Uh, if you're on duty, you can go back on duty, but you can't discuss the case until it's been decided. Okay? Be excused. Yeah. Can you, you can be excused also? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. At this time, you're going to stick with CTEC. Enter all the photos as CTEC. We've sort of been discussing them as such anyway. Um, just, uh, so we're going to accept as exhibits one through eight the stage pictures and, and A and B yours as exhibits in the case. I'm not going to mark them. Either, but That's fine. Thank you. Take all Jason Yaros, my name is Joe Y-A-R-O-S-Z. And how are you employed? I'm a trooper with the New York State Police. Okay. 
Or how long have you been A little over four years. Are you a certified law enforcement officer in the Oh, yeah. And prior to becoming a state trooper, you're also a certified law enforcement police officer, is that right? Correct. I work for the town of Swansea full time. And draw your attention to July 1st of this year, about um, 2014, just to be clear the record, at about 6 p.m. were you on duty for the New Hampshire State Police? I was. And at about that time, were you called in to assist the King Police Department with the situation that was unfolding? I was. And were you in full uniform that evening? Yes, I was. And um, how did you assist the King Police Department? Um, I responded to Ivy Drive right behind Wendy's for an armed subject that was held up against the building, and I was asked to assist with perimeter security. Okay. So where did you respond to assist with perimeter security? I was responding from Sullivan, so I came through the city of Keene, pulled into the Wendy's parking lot. I positioned my cruiser across the driveway so no one could come in and leave from the back of the exit. And then I proceeded to get out of the vehicle and I went to the back side of one of the buildings and I positioned myself on the north, northwest corner. And who were you there with? Trooper Eaton and Officer English. What was your purpose at that location aside from perimeter security? Or just to describe what you know. We were right on the north, northwest corner of the building. The subject was on the opposite side of the building, which would have been the east. His only measure of escape would have been to run north and around the corner with the positions. Josh Officer English's dog was there to possibly apprehend the guy. We were there with our patrol rifles. He was armed. Okay. And um, I'm just going to show you some photographs that you've been looking at throughout this proceeding. If you could take a look at these photographs, um, do these photos depict the area that you were stationed at? They do. And which photo is best to depict that? Uh, photo number five is right where I was standing, next to that round, round the bush. I was over to the right of it. Drippy Eaton was in the middle. Officer English and his canine were right on the corner, and um, that's where we were positioned. And around the opposite side is where the subject with the tan demos. Okay. And um, how long were you stationed at that location? I think well over three hours, three to four hours. And at some point, if you remember the approximate time, did a civilian come up into that area? Yes, there was. Do you remember about what time that was? I don't recall the exact time, but it was it was well into the circumstance, like the incident uh, a couple hours now. I don't know the exact time. And what was the lighting situation? At Very dark. And when did you, how did you first notice that person and where did you see that person and you use the photos to? Uh, Trooper Eaton said to the effect that, hey, somebody's right behind us. And um, I turned and looked and I saw a, a gentleman. He had uh, an object in his hand. Couldn't tell what it was at the time. It was really long. And then I saw a light turn on. So I, I, I could tell it was like a video camera that got turned on. And he would have been um, probably standing right in this area near that cement. Um, he'll probably be on in between the corner and the cement. And you're pointing at states um, six. Yeah, number six. And um, what steps forward? And what concerns you about that person's presence? Um, first of all, he would have been right in the line of fire if the gentleman came right around the corner. His, his only means of escape would have come around the corner. He would have been directly looking right at us and the person with the camera directly behind us and could have engaged, engaged somebody with his firearm. And so what measures did you or any other, any other troopers take? I, walk, I walked over and confronted the gentleman. And what, can you describe that interaction? Yeah, I, I walked over to him and I said, immediately, you need to leave, go. I just kept on telling him to leave. And, he said to the effect that uh, he was with the press. And I was like, it doesn't matter, go. You're in a dangerous zone. You don't know what's going on. You need to go. And he started to back up a little, but then he stopped. And then what happened when he stopped? When he stopped, um, he said to the effect that uh, you know he felt he had a right to be here. And I, so I told him he did. You need to go. Um, it's really dangerous. And then he. And I can't remember if I told him I said he had somebody had a gun at that point, but he, he said to the effect that I understand the risks, and I'll risk my own life. And um, I told him, you, you really need to go, keep on going. He backed up just a little more, and then he's like, this is fine. 
And I was like, all right, listen, I, I got a job to do. I got to go get somebody to deal with you because I had my patrol rifle. I really wasn't in the position to, to deal with them. I, was, I had a specific assignment to, to guard that post and I was being distracted by him. So I went to get somebody that was rogue in the area and I, I turned and I left. And where he was standing, if, um, we got to this point right here, exhibit number eight. I, I got him to walk back to the corner of the building right there. I, I used that corner as like an imaginary line. I said, hey, listen, this is a line right here. Don't cross that. I'll go get somebody to come back and deal with you. And he said, he understood. And um, in your opinion, was he within the perimeter that was set up? He was. And do perimeters sometimes expand if the need arises? They do. And um, are you aware that Oh, and I'm sorry. Who was it, the person? Were you able to uh, eventually identify? I eventually him? was able to identify. And who was that person? Right at the defendant's table, wearing a green and blue shirt, James Cleveland. Well, the record's like what it is. Yes. Thank you. And you're aware that the was recording the interactions. I was. Happened. And when I finally got up close to him, and I could tell it was a tripod, it was like some sort of camcorder on top of it. Okay. And with the court's permission, I'd like to play. Is it necessary? Um, I, perhaps not. But it's, it's is, it, is it being redacted of his testimony? It, it, well, I guess, yeah. Okay, okay. I will. Fair enough. <coughs> and um, after you had that initial act interaction with the defendant, did another trooper have further interaction with him? Yes. When, who was that? Uh, it was Sergeant Gazer. As I walked from where Mr. Cleveland stood. I started walking back towards Officer English and Trooper Eaton, and other officers were around the corner. And Josh English said, Hey, he's still in the line of fire. And I was like, All right. And at that time, Sergeant Gazer came walking up, and I told him, He's like, What's going on? And I was like, There's a guy down there filming us. He's, he's in the line of fire. Um, he's bothering Josh's dog. Uh, and he's like, All right, I'll deal with him. Okay. And um, so Trooper Gazer went to interact with the defendant, is that Correct. right? And did you later join um, Trooper Gazer and the defendant again? I did. And can you describe what happened when um, you joined them? When I, yeah, approximately a couple minutes went by, I don't know exactly how many, and I would occasionally peer down the alley uh, towards them, and they got a little further away from where I initially left Mr. In, uh, Cleveland, and uh, I could just tell by the body language that Sergeant Gazer and Mr. Cleveland were in, engaged in some sort of a debate, and uh, I went down to check on him again, and uh, at that point, I heard Sergeant Gazer telling Mr. Cleveland, hey, you need to go, you're going to get arrested, I, I'm ordering you to go, and um, the defendant was arguing with them, stating that he felt he had the right to be here, he wasn't in anybody's way. And he, Sergeant Gazer, it doesn't matter, you're, you're in a dangerous situation. And, and then, you know, other things unfolded after that. Okay, and what unfolded specifically? Did, did, the, trooper, did the defendant ever leave the area? He did. The At one point, I knew what was coming. I knew he was about to be arrested. So I grabbed his tripod and I told him, well, listen, I'm going to score you out of here. I was trying to save him from getting arrested. So I started to pull him with his tripod. And, uh, he, I felt a little resistance. He wasn't pulling back or anything, but he, he wasn't coming. Uh, and I let go and I turned and Sergeant Gazer said to him, listen, you need to go or you're getting arrested. And then he said a couple more things. I don't know exactly what he said to Sergeant Gazer. And he's like, all right, enough's enough. You're under arrest. And Sergeant Gazer went to grab him and uh, he pulled away. He stepped back and his camera went flying. Sergeant Gazer had his right wrist and when he, he pulled him, the, uh, Mr. Cleveland, then his back turned towards me, so I came around and I grabbed his left arm. And we both, you know, placed his arms behind his back and started to get Okay. So after the defendant was told he was under arrest, he then moved away? Yeah, he said no. Uh, he said a couple of things in a, like a real, like a, he's blabbering. I couldn't tell him what he was saying. He was really excited because. Sergeant Gaves was going to get like to arrest him. He said like something they felt like, no, I, I give up or something to the effect, and then he started to pull away and he, he the camera went flying and and he just grabbed onto him and <coughs> off them. Okay. 
but he did take a couple steps back and he, and he pulled away from, he was attempting to pull away from Sergeant Gage. And how was he pulling away with his body? He, uh, Sergeant Gage was going to, to grab him and he kind of went backwards, like, no, and he took a couple steps and then went backwards. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Evan. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, your name? Yaros. Yaros. Uh, you arrived on the scene. What, what happened when you arrived? Or what was the first thing that you did when you got there? At the start of the incident? Yes, sir. I pulled into Wendy's parking lot. Okay. Positioned my cruiser in the back parking lot um, across the entrance so no cars from Wendy's could pull out onto Ivy Drive from that end. Right away. Uh, did you go over to the command post? At that time, there was no, there wasn't a command post set up. Um, it, it, it got set up after I was there. Uh, I guess could you approach the map? I guess place the picture on the ground. This is a aerial view of the map. Defense Exhibit B. Mm -hmm. So you arrived at Wendy's. Yeah. Where's Wendy's at? Wendy's would be right here. Um, yeah, the building's right here. I came in. The subject was already against the building. A couple officers were behind trees. I positioned my cruiser right across here, so no cars could come this way. What What did you do after that? At that point, I got out. Sergeant Gaither was on scene. Was my immediate supervisor. Trooper Eaton was with them. It was a uh, keen officer. Not sure exactly who it was. Uh, the King units were dealing with the subject right there, and they said, uh, Sergeant Gage said, assist King by going around to the side of the building with Trooper Eaton, because Officer English's dog, him and his dog were there. So I went and grabbed my patrol rifle and uh, left my car in there, and I walked to that corner of the building. Uh, was there a police tape at the scene? Yes. Could you indicate where it was? Uh, it was all along the parking lot, going across here, went up here, and stopped at that building right there. Okay. Uh, when did you notice myself initially? I don't know the exact time Trooper Eaton pointed you off. Okay. Uh, where, where did you notice me? Could you refer to? Um, you were right. You came. Up this alleyway in between the building and this tree line, it's a small alleyway about five or six feet. Starts from down there, goes from, runs this whole length of the building, and I spotted you kind of towards the, the end of this building. Okay. Uh, so when you first spotted me, did you say anything to me? I personally, I was maybe 20 feet away from the trooper and said, hey, there's a guy over there. And he said something, and it caught my attention, and that's when I turned and saw you. And then at that time, I saw the big light light up, which meant you were turning on your, your camera's uh, spotlight, I guess. And so I walked over to you and pulled in front of you. So the, uh, the camera had a spotlight on it? It did. Okay. I saw some, something light up. I assume it was a spotlight. Who was the first officer that spoke to me? Verbally, Trooper Eaton. Okay. Uh, uh, why did you approach me? You were in, in a bad situation. You were in a police area. There was an armed subject on the other side of the building. You were clearly in the, the line of fire. And you were very close to us. And Officer English had his police canine. Who, who also was alerted to you, and um, the dogs needs to be focused on the situation, or other people end up getting bit. Why, why you specifically? Um, I just took the initiative to, to confront you. There was only three of us there. The officer English couldn't do it because he had his dog, and so I did it. Did you witness any other civilians uh, while you were at that station? No. So you didn't witness, I'd be asking that script. 
Is it possible that there are other civilians in the area? In, can you be more specific which area you're referring to where you're standing? Or from your station, you, you, from where you were at until you saw me, there were no other civilians. No, because one of the one of the things that I also did prior to posting up right at that corner was we cleared every single one of these apartments, knocked on the doors, and got all the people out of them. And um, the tape was set up, so I did not see any civilians from the time all these apartments were cleared until the time that you showed up. Were there any people, to your knowledge, in Building 7? I'm not aware. Were there any people in Building 13? Building 13, do you see the row of cars in the parking lot? Right here? Yes. Building 13 is those row of three buildings. Uh, I'm not sure. sure. I, I cleared these buildings. These ones had numbers up into the 50s. <coughs> Do you know where the suspect was when you were at your station? I did. Can you indicate on the map where he was? <clears throat> it's a little shadow you can't really see, but he, he would have been like right in that area. There's a, a little nook in the building. Because I saw him when I first pulled into Wendy's. Uh, I could tell exactly where he was. And knowing what the layout of the place looks like, I, I knew where he was from where I was posted. Were you aware that other officers were around him? Close to him. Uh, I mean, can you be more specific around? Um, were, did other officers have a line of sight to the suspect? They did. Approximately how many officers were there? We should call certain regulations as other officers. Okay, we'll draw one. Did you have a line of sight to the suspect? I did not. So from your station, you could not see the suspect, is that correct? Correct. Basically, if he had come around that corner and wanted to engage Officer English, Trooper Eden, and myself, he would have been directly behind him. So if he was pointing his gun directly at us, the barrel of the weapon would have been pointed at you as well. So if the suspect had moved, uh, potentially that area would have been in the line of fire, is that correct? Correct. Now you mentioned that you were a Swansea police officer before. Uh, how many active years in law enforcement do you have? Altogether, close to 11. Because I, I worked part time for almost four years as well. Is it fair to say that you have a familiar, familiarity with firearms? I do. And you're, did you know what weapon the suspect was armed with at the time of the incident? At the time, no, but I, I did after. No. Based on your experience, um, how far does a bullet travel? What's the relevancy? Well, um, it's my opinion of that. Oh, oh. Uh, the state is alleging <coughs> that the situation is dangerous and there's a risk of bodily injury. So I'm trying to establish exactly what is meant by that. Right, you can answer. From where, if he came around and immediately engaged us from where you were standing, it would have probably been less than 70 feet. Yeah. The gun he had was a 380. That would have killed you if it hit you. How far, what would you guess the lethal range of a 380 projectile is? Just answer that. Is a 380 auto lethal at 300 feet? Depending on the trajectory that it took, yes. Okay. In a straight line, it might drop, but it'll still kill you. It's traveling over 900 feet per second. Were there other civilians on the scene? No. Okay. In the general area, yes, but <coughs> in the crime scene area. So you approached me and you told me to leave, is that correct? I did. Uh, 
what was my initial response? Your initial response was that you had a right to be here, that you were a member of the press. Did I back up at all? Not at first. I kind of had to walk towards you and kind of back you up a little. But you were backing up at initially for a couple of feet. Is it possible I might not have heard you? No. That was clear as day. And I said it multiple times. Can you indicate, so you mentioned that you walked back with me. Can you indicate and that I stopped? Can you show on the map where I stopped at? Uh, it would be easier to use one of these, unless you want me to use that. Uh, I guess, could we put up uh, Exhibit A, which is kind of a zoomed in map? can use whatever pictures you want, but I'll tell you, it would help me if I looked at the photographs so much, much clearer and closer. Okay. Um, it's, up, it's up to you. I, I uh, so will you refer to photograph eight? Yes. Um, where, where is photograph eight at? Photograph eight is, um, it's, you initially were right here, and then I backed you up at first to right about that cement door, and then I finally got you back up to this corner. That's where I told you, you know, there was a mythical line not to cross that. Somebody else would be back to deal with you. And how far would you estimate it is between the cement slab and the corner? 20 feet tops. Okay. So I backed up 20 feet, is that correct? About 20 feet. Okay. Uh, could you indicate on the big map, if is it a, where that picture eight is, where that corner is that you told me to back up to? Yeah, right there. Okay. Did you see that? Yes. Okay. So I was on the first building of that world building. You started here and you ended up right there. Okay. Uh, why do you think I was out there? Why? Yes, sir. After realizing who you are, who you're affiliated with, who was basically filming the situation. Okay. And I told you that I was correct, correct? You, yes, you did. Uh, when we were walking back, you stated that I stopped. Is that correct? Yes. So referring to that corner indicated in picture eight, mm -hmm. uh, did you tell me that I cannot pass that point? I did. Okay. To your knowledge, did I pass that point at any time past that agreement? When I left, no, I was uh, not aware. When you came back later, I guess, with Mr. Gazer, uh, where was I? Was I further back or at the same spot? No, you were further back. Okay. And I told you I assumed whatever risk I was in, correct? Something to the effect like that. Why, why did you agree to that, that point? This point? Yes, sir. As I stated before, I actually had an assignment that I was doing. I was assigned to cover that corner, and when you showed up, you pretty much took me off that post and I also had my M4 patrol rifle if you recall and I was not in a position if I had to take you into custody at that point to, to safely do it without that getting in the way and I felt that um, another officer that was roving the area that wasn't assigned to a post would be better suited to speak with you and have you leave. Did I tell you I was there? Did I say I was not there to interfere? I don't recall. <clears throat> uh, when Mr. Gazer was interacting with me, did you witness that? Some of it towards the end. Okay. So, um, 
So off, or Trooper Gazer was interacting with me. Uh, could you refer to the map and, to the best of your knowledge, uh, the big map? Uh, where did that occur? It would have been right in this area okay. when I came back the second time. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks. To a second, you put the pictures in. So you mentioned that you uh, grabbed me and started escorting me. Is that correct? I grabbed your tripod and okay. started pulling you. Uh, where did that occur? It occurred from here. We were trying to get you around that corner and to leave, and it happened right around that area. <coughs> and we started to get closer to the corner of that building. So, where, where did the actual arrest happen? Right, right there. Okay. So on the, the edge of building 13, correct? Not really in the edge. We, we were kind of like in the center. We went right up against the edge. Okay. Right in that area. Experienced law enforcement officer, have you ever dealt with the media before? Yes. Does the media have a right to observe the police? They do from a safe distance. Okay. And usually it's an assigned area which was over and pizza hut. What do you mean by Sorry. safe? Did you say an assigned area? An assigned area. <coughs> tell them, hey, listen, post up, in certain area, and they usually comply and can, don't can try you, to sneak up on us. Uh, please put exhibit B up. And could you indicate, do you know where the assigned area was? You said it was behind Pizza Hut? Yeah, when I finally, when this incident ended, every the media was in the parking lot of Pizza Hut. I saw the WMUR game over there. Referring back to the alley north of building 13, were there outdoor lights there? This alley back here? Yes, sir. It, it was completely dark. So there's no outdoor lights back there? No. Okay. Now, you said that the media has a right to observe a safe distance. Correct. Um, what, what are you basing that on? That they're not interfering with what we need to do, that they're not putting themselves in danger, they're not trespassing on private property. What gives the media the right to observe police? Objection. These are all legal questions. Sustained. If you want to make legal arguments at the end of the case about what you think your status was, you'll be free to do that. So Mr. Gazer was interacting with me, you approached. Um, what, what, what was uh, Mr. Gazer's demeanor at that point? He was, I mean, he was pretty serious. Um, he was ordering you to leave. He was very, very respectful and courteous, and he was trying to get you to leave. Did, did he raise his voice? Voice was raised. Did I raise my voice? He was somewhat. He was excited. Did I tell you that um, <clears throat> I wasn't there to interfere? Again, I, I don't recall the exact words that you used. I don't remember a few. So during the actual arrest, um, what, what did I say? Ask and answer. 
I don't know if these, he answered a new question, but I don't recall whether, have you asked that question before? On this um, witness? I, I asked him, did I raise my voice? Why don't you try it again, but let's not, we don't need to rehash all the, all the testimony. Okay, so at the moment that Trooper Gazer said that I was under arrest, what did I say? I remember you yelling, no. Uh, take, pulling your arm back, taking a couple steps back, and I thought you might have said something like I had enough, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so you arrest, you grabbed my tripod, is that correct? During the rest, no. Okay. Your tripod had fallen to the ground. So, uh, Mr. Gazer said I was under arrest, correct? Correct. And then my tripod fell to the ground? When he went to reach out and he pulled back, I just remember the tripod falling to the ground. Okay. Did I say I'm not resisting? No. <coughs> you were panicky as we were cuffing you. And you, you were saying things I did. I just don't recall exactly what you were saying. Is it possible I said I'm not resisting? You possibly could have said it. So you said that you grabbed my left arm and gazer grabbed my right arm. Correct. Correct. Did I offer any resistance? Did I try to yank my arms away? No. Um, I twisted your arm behind your back pretty fast. Would you say, in your experience as a law enforcement officer, was it difficult to arrest you? No. Once the cuffs were placed on me, did I resist any further? No. Did I comply with your request from that point? For the most part. We just escorted you back to the cruiser. Did you have to carry me? No. So I walked. Correct. If the suspect had come around the corner, would you have shot him? Would have done what well, was necessary at the moment. Okay. That's because he's, he's dangerous. He had a firearm, correct? Correct. Is it reasonable that the other officers might have shot him if he left? Sustained. I'm not going to grant much more latitude to either side here as far as these circumstances are concerned. I've heard enough about the perimeter and all the other information. It's getting very redundant. Okay, number of questions. Well, if you have another question that's not redundant, that's fine. I'm going to stop you if you have no more questions. Oh, no, I, I don't. Okay. That's the last one. Thank you. We do it. I just have one question. The two green arrows, the uniform that you're wearing today, is that the same or similar uniform as the one you were wearing that evening? I was wearing the summer attire with short sleeves and no tie. But otherwise, the same. Same exactly. Thank you. 
Okay, it's, it's still sequestered. If, uh, can you be excused? Uh, regarding the, the uniform, you mentioned that it was dark by building 13, correct? Correct. Is it possible I might not have been able to identify who you were? No. Okay. No, exactly. <laughs> right. Remember, you're still sequestered. Uh, you're excused from the building. Yes, you can't discuss your testimony. Mm -hmm. G-A-I-S-E-R. And how are you employed? I'm a sergeant with the New Hampshire State Police. And for how long have you been so employed? I've been employed by the State Police since April of 1998. Prior to that, I was a police officer in the town of Arlington, New Hampshire, from April 94 to April 98. Are you served by a law enforcement officer in New Hampshire? I am. And drawing your attention to July 1st of this year, 2014, at about 6 p.m., were you on duty for the State Police? I was. And <coughs> At that time that you were on duty, were you in full uniform? Yes. And were you the, the patrol supervisor that evening? I was. And at, at about 6 o'clock, did you uh, become involved in a situation with the key police department concerning an armed standoff? Yes, we were uh, requested to assist them in the area of Ivy Drive. Um, the information we had at the time was that they had uh, been in a, some type of a uh, foot chase with an individual who was armed with a handgun. He was wanted for, I believe, a parole violation. Uh, that was the information we had at that time. And what specific duties did you assist the King Police Department with that evening? I, I directed uh, Troopers Eaton and Yaros uh, to the scene uh, where we were briefed by Lieutenant Lawrence uh, of the King Police Department. Um, Troopers Yaros and Eaton were both detailed to provide <coughs> um, perimeter security to the north. Uh, corner of building number seven, I believe, of the Ivy Drive complex. Okay. And um, how did you assist troopers in your house that evening? Once they were detailed to that location, um, I returned to uh, Lieutenant Lawrence, spoke with him further about coordinating efforts and, and units that were responding. Um, I physically uh, assisted in setting up uh, barrier tape, often referred to the crime scene tape to limit access. Uh, the area behind McDonald's, unfortunately, that parking lot was rapidly filling up with foot traffic and people um, probably curious about what was going on. So the big concern was that area to uh, make sure people were, were safely away as best we could uh, because the individual had uh, cornered himself into an alcove behind building number seven, directly adjacent to the McDonald's parking lot. And he was still currently on it. I'm going to show you some photographs of because there was a lot of testimony earlier about the perimeter. I'm going to just specifically ask you about what had um, what occurred in this general location. Okay. Um, so you had indicated that troopers Yaros and Eaton and Officer English as well, which you didn't testify to, they were located in this general vicinity in um, State Spot. Is that right? Yes, Officer English actually arrived uh, sometime after we did. So okay. they were in place uh, absent his presence for the first uh, little bit. Okay. And um, how did you assist those troopers with respect to their post that evening? Uh, I would occasionally, you know, physically I brought them water several times, very hot that night. Very neat. We couldn't have a despondent man with a gun running around with all the foot traffic that was around. Okay. And so, and about what time do you recall that was when you responded to that location and dealt with the civilian? It had become dark. Uh, our initial arrival was 6 p.m. I would estimate, I can't recall the exact time, it was probably somewhere between 9 and 10 p.m. Okay. And so, um, based on your concerns and your observations of the civilian, <clears throat> the other troopers' interactions with this person, mm -hmm. how did you respond? 
I, I told Trooper Yarrow I said I would go speak with the individual. Um, as I approached the individual, I could hear that he was in conversation with an elderly female. I heard her yell or say out the window, who is that, what's going on? Um, the individual who I today knew to be Mr. Cleveland um, told her that there was a situation. Um, that's what I heard him say to her. Um, and just to tell you everything, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Um, do you see Mr. Cleveland in the court today? I do. He's sitting right there with the uh, green and blue show. Well, the record, like, the yes, um, so continue on. If you could describe your interactions <coughs> with Sure. As I approached him, uh, his phone actually rang. And I engaged him. I greeted him. I said something to the effect of, how are you doing? Um, Mr. Cleveland spoke on his phone. He didn't acknowledge my presence at that point. Uh, once he was done with his phone call, I re-engaged him, uh, basically explaining to him that he was in a dangerous situation. Um, I didn't think that he knew exactly what was going on. I told him that I had to explain it to him as we walked, but he had to leave the area. And how did he respond? Um, he did not want to leave. Um, we debated it for a short period of time. He told me the other trooper told me he could stay where he was. Um, I told him, I explained to him I was the supervisor, I was Trooper Yarrow's boss, and I changed that. Uh, in my opinion, his positioning was uh, obviously a safety concern, not only for himself, but it was uh, interfering with, with the police dog's ability to do what it was supposed to be doing. Okay, so did you ask him to leave again? Numerous times. And, and um, how did he respond? Can you describe what happened? He argued with me. Um, at that point, I told him several times, if he didn't leave, he, he would face arrest. I told him to back up. My uh, intention was to get him to go around the corner of that building where he would no longer uh, be visible to the dog. And should Mr. Snow come around the corner and engage the officers with gunfire, Mr. Cleveland would have been safely removed behind the building at that point, rather than in the backdrop of the officers. And so, um were able to get the defendant to agree to move. Yeah. And so what happened? Uh, Trooper Yaros, <clears throat> I, I raised my voice at Mr. Cleveland several times, reinforcing that he needed to leave or to be arrested. Trooper Yaros had re-approached, uh, engaged us, actually picked up Mr. Cleveland's tripod and said, I'm going to escort you out of the area. Uh, Mr. Cleveland had hold of the tripod as well. Um, a little struggle with the tripod ensued. Mr. Cleveland said something in fact, don't touch my stuff. Um, at this point, I told him, get around the corner or you're getting arrested. Again, he refused. He said, fine, get under arrest. I uh, went to grab his right. Uh, were there cruisers to indicate the edge of the perimeter? If they go to the existence and dimensions of the perimeter, they're, they're okay. But, but we don't have to go over things too many times. Okay. Go ahead. You can ask, ask the question again. So I guess to expedite, um, can I have you approach the uh, wall stand here? Could you put the pictures down? This is uh, Defense Exhibit B. It's an overhead map of the scene. Okay. Um, it's just so you're oriented. Uh, where is Building 7? Are you familiar with Building 7? Yeah, okay. I, I just want to make sure I'm oriented correctly on your, your picture here. Obviously, I haven't really seen it before. Yes. This would be the rear McDonald's. Okay. okay. And I'm sorry, just stuck yet. This is the rear parking lot of McDonald's. Command post was in this area. Okay. The building 7 will be over here. Okay. Where's the suspect? Somewhere in here. Did you know that at the time? Yes. Okay. Uh, where did you put caution tape on? My primary areas were through the parking lot here, and somewhere on the front here. Um, I didn't myself put all this out, but I know other uh, key police officers had strung some more. Is it, did you witness any gaps in the tape? Oh yeah, there, there was no way we could tape off everything. Ideally, we would have loved to set a perimeter all the way around that. There's woods here. Um, it, it would have been physically impossible to put a physical barrier around the whole area. Uh, building 7 was evacuated, evacuated, is that correct? Correct. Was Building 13 evacuated? No. Uh, we evacuated the people we couldn't get out. A lot of those people are elderly or with special needs. And it was thought that we should leave them in place. Um, they obviously had mobility issues, a lot of them. 
Building 7 was evacuated. <coughs> who, who conducted the evacuations? Uh, the two troopers that arrived with the sheriffs. And does, it, does that have anything to do with the perimeter? Or the, or the circumstances of our arrival? Okay, I'll withdraw. So you wanted me to go around the corner, correct? Correct. How far away was the corner? I can only estimate again, probably 15 feet or so. Okay. In your opinion, would that have been a safe area? It would not have been ideal, but it would be much better than where you were. Okay. My fear was that uh, Mr. Snow would come around that corner and if he fired rounds at the officers, he would have been directly behind them. So you stated that I was under arrest. I said no. Uh, what, what happened at that point? He pulled your arm away, he took a few steps, the camera got knocked down, and then we were able to get you in handcuffs. How long do you think the, how long did the arrest take to, uh, to carry on? I would have to guess about 10 seconds or so. So when you, so you approached me, you grabbed at me first, is that correct? I did. Did you grab the tripod? No. Okay. Uh, where did you grab? I went through your right arm, which you pulled away. Okay. Uh, did I attempt to run? You took a few steps. I don't know what your intentions were. Did I say you're not arresting me? Did I say anything while you were arresting me? You said no, and you said I'm done. Did I say anything else? Objection has the answer. Sustained. Did I say I'm not resisting? Objection has Sustained. In your experience as a law enforcement officer, was it a difficult arrest? To carry out? Physically difficult? Yes, sir. Not overly. When you grab my arm, the other trooper grabbed the other arm, is that correct? Correct. Did I attempt to yank my arm back? From myself? Or the other trooper? Just from myself, as far as I'm aware. Once you had placed, uh, did I go limp on the ground? No. Once you had placed the cuffs on me, did I attempt to move away from you? Sustained. Once you placed the cuffs on me, did I comply with your further request? Yes, you did. Okay. So you mentioned that I took a few steps back, is that correct? Yes. What direction was I moving towards? You were moving away from us. And what direction was that? That would have been west. So it would have been west. If we're looking at your picture, that way. I guess could you, I guess maybe indicate on the map, kind of like my direction of travel? We're going to assume that's north. Uh, he might have witnessed, he might have some knowledge of uh, me being transported. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, that would be irrelevant. Okay. Now, so, 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 please raise your right hand. You swear or affirm anything you say here be the truth? I affirm my honesty. Okay. What's your name, please? My name is Garrett Ian, last name E A M. your background, Mr. Ian? Sir Ellen is his background. Uh, do you have a criminal justice degree, Derek? What's the relevance of that? Mr. Cleveland, I've given you wide, wide latitude here today. Okay. I'll withdraw it. Can you describe the events of the evening of July 1st? Joe. Objection is a very overbroad question.
Why don't you give him a starting point? We'll see where. Where were you present during the arm standoff on July first? There was an armed standoff behind McDonald's in Keene on July 1st, and I arrived on that scene at, I believe, about 8.30 that evening. What was your purpose being there? I had heard that there was some sort of uh, police situation occurring that involved the Bearcat being brought out, and I was there to document the scene and uh, provide journalistic background as far as what's going on. And you believe, correct? Correct. And officers were there in that position for public safety reasons, correct? Um, the objection, she's Did asking me to speculate. I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase the question. Did you believe they were there for a reason, to keep the public safe? That's objection, call for speculation. I'm asking to what he believed. Yeah, it's not improper speculation. You need to answer the question. So can you re-ask the question? Did you believe that the officers there, Trooper Eaton, Trooper Yaros, Trooper Gazer, Officer English, did you believe at the time that they were there for public safety reasons? I thought they were part of the edge of the perimeter. Yes. But you believe that they were there for public safety reasons, correct? For public safety reasons. I mean, I, I guess so, yes. And they asked you to leave, correct? Yes. And you didn't, correct? I didn't knowingly. Uh, the reason I didn't want to leave is because I was exercising my rights to observe public officials and act as the press. Okay, regardless of your reasons for not, for not leaving, they asked you to leave and you refused to leave, correct? That's correct. Uh, I would say that um, in my experience, law enforcement officers always want the media to leave. Officers never once asked you anything about why you were reporting, correct? They just asked you to leave, correct? That's correct. So once Trooper Gazer told you you were under arrest, you said no, correct? Incorrect. So Trooper Gazer said, get around that corner or I'm placing you under arrest. I thought that was an unlawful order, so I said no to that. I did not say no to the arrest. You heard Trooper Gazer testify once he told you you were under arrest and you reached to take your arm, you pulled it away, correct? No. Well, I heard him say that, but that's not what happened. But you didn't want to be arrested at that point. You wanted to leave the area, correct? That's a fair statement, yes. If Trooper Gazer's intentions were to have me vacate the area, at that point he has uh, succeeded, because I wanted to leave. I did not want to be arrested. So he only succeeded despite his multiple requests for you, once he told you you were under arrest. Is that fair to say? Well, he succeeded because him and the other officer basically kind of lunged at me. And at that point, I feared that I was under arrest. But you did hear them say, you communicate that you were under arrest, correct? And it's clearly more, it's clearly... I heard them say, the so Officer Gaster says, Move around the corner, you're under arrest. I reply, no. And then he says something like, you're under arrest. And at that point, I don't recall exactly what I said, but it was something like, um, uh, OK, I'm done. I'll leave. I think that's what I said. So, but now you admit that you initially said no, when Trooper Gazer said you were under arrest, right? Despite your previous testimony. No, I didn't say no. I said, OK, I'm done. I'll leave. That's not saying no to the arrest. Okay, but you just testified, though. I, I said, said no to the request for me to go around the corner. Okay, I have nothing further. Right, do you have anything to add based on the questions you were asked? Yes, I would. Um, 
far as testimony. No. Okay. I didn't have a seat. Anything else? 